We're talking about the right to property, especially for widows as well. And so in case your husband passes uh, without a will, what really can the Lord do for you? Now, hello, I'm Dede. I was married to my husband for 11 years before he passed on, um, before he passed away. Now, in May 2011, my husband fell sick and was diagnosed with liver cancer. So I went to my husband's family to inform them about his condition, and they told me to take care of him myself. In September 2011, my husband unfortunately passed away, and I decided to let his family know, since it's tradition. I told his family, and they claim I killed him, so I should take, uh, I should bury him myself. This is sad. My late husband used to work at a renowned company in Ghana. So the company helped me with the burial process before uh, the body was sent to the funeral home. Now the family came for the body and sent it to a mortuary in his hometown. Before the burial, his family asked me to bring everything owned by him. And that included his house and a car that, um, and the house was built on his father's land. And everything in that house they wanted it as well. Things became very difficult for me during that time. So my family had to plead with them to allow us to settle whatever issue before the burial. After the burial, his family asked me and my four kids to move out from the house, and I did. Snit gave me some money after the burial, and I had to share that with his family, and it was shared equally. Now, they later came back to me saying they wanted my children, so I should give my kids to them. I got very scared and didn't want to lose my family and my children, so I had to move from Tema to Agona Swedru to settle down with my kids. It's been eight years since he passed away, and no family member has called or even asked how I've managed to take care of my kids. I want to find out from a lawyer if there's any way I can get my house back since that's the only property my husband left for his kids. Very sad story right there. And this starts the conversation about the interstate succession law. And of course, we do know that the PNDC law 111, uh, which was passed in 1985 and also amended in 1991, um, is a law that protects the right of people such as this woman when it comes to dying without a will. And so for a woman who's lost her husband, what really can be done? We're in Africa, where unfortunately the woman is subjected to all kinds of more treatment when she loses her husband and one of the biggest problems is when the family fights the woman for the man's property joining me in the studio is lawyer justice abdullah and he will educate us on what can be done and of course provide some advice for this woman as well thank you so much for joining me on the thank show you, my dear. how are you doing i've been good and yeah. you i've been fine thank you good Except to reconnect you abandoned me i'm always. sorry <laughs> i'm so sorry i never expected that from you i'm sorry i, I broke your heart one of the most special you ones. are that's why we're here together today well, uh, I hope it to will help be this same woman. On 4th of February. Well, uh, 14th, I mean. 14th. Oh, you're bringing me a gift? Well, uh, you have to. We have okay. to connect again. I want right? some cocoa dairy. Thank you very much. Absolutely fantastic. You but have you've seen the story of the woman. First of all, before we even delve into this matter, at what point should uh, one person decide to, you know, put together a will? Uh, um, you know, coincidentally, I was having a similar conversation yesterday on this same subject matter. And this has always been the advice. I mean, um, the moment you start making income, the moment you start getting money, the moment you start buying property mm -hmm. as a young man or woman, it is right from that moment that you start, you have to start thinking about having a will in place. Okay. It's easier for you to assume that um, if you are single and you are making so much money, your parents would naturally um, succeed um, succeed in case, I mean, succeed your estate in case yeah. you pass on. Yeah. However, the difficulty is this. You may have friends, family, and other people who may depend on you. Now, those people will not be taken care of in your absence, yeah. assuming your parents even take over when you pass on. And so you need to have plans in place for such persons. They may be special people in your heart. They may not necessarily be your blood. Mm -hmm. They may be people that are not even connected to you or your family in any way. Yeah. Probably you are time and space apart that nobody even knows about your existence. Uh -huh. But you have a special connection. They may not necessarily be a girlfriend or a boyfriend, but yeah. they are people that you genuinely 
assessed on a daily basis. Just like most of us, you drive through the traffic, there are people that you constantly wish to donate to. Yeah. Not because they have done anything sp special for you, but it's because they Just are dear to you. It's genuine. It's something you do as human. But if you say I should, when I start earning money, I start earning money maybe from when I start doing national service. I'm probably too young. Um, I'm still nurturing those relationships. So yes, I do have a natural relationship with my parents, my siblings, and all of that. But along the line, I may meet someone, I may have a child, I may get married. Should I not wait till I get married or have a child before I really put together a will? You see, there's no, there's, there, there, there's no legal requirement as to having to make a baby or make a family before you make okay. a will. Mm. The moment you start having those ideas in mind, well, it's, it's not as if it is a bad idea to wait until you have that. Except, as I've said, then everyone else that you would want to help in your absence cannot be helped. Cannot be helped, yeah. And so if you genuinely believe that there's no one else to help, then you can wait until thy kingdom come, or at least until there are other encumbrances in your life, such okay. as a husband or a child. Okay. Then you can absolutely determine as to that moment in life right. to make a will. Because at that moment, if you do not, that is where the clash between family and family mm. comes in. Okay. Because okay. you have two families competing over your estate. All right. What does the law say, uh, especially in relation to this woman's problem? What does the law say when you die interstate? Um, in relation to this woman's problem, mm -hmm. I think there are unique um, issues there. All so right. if, you, uh, if you, let's probably look at... Um, um, the, the law the and law its totality. In general. Okay. Yeah. Um, generally, the 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 a spouse takes over immediately. Okay. Um, if there's if there's a spouse, if there is a child, they are the priorities, and mm. then indeed before the parents. Or, and and the, in fact, the spouse takes over almost everything in the household. I see. Almost everything in the household. Okay. So if there's a if there's a matrimonial home, there is there's a matrimonial car, if you want to call it. So, yeah. Or any other thing, call it matrimonial property. It goes almost automatically to, to the, the spouse. spouse. Right. If there are excesses, usually about 18, I'm sorry, 8% would go to the extended family. So what, what, what do you mean by excesses? Or say if you have more than a house, if you have more than two cars or three cars. Oh. Say, I mean, if a wife has a car, I also have a car. Uh -huh. And then let's say another car for the kids. Yeah. Um, and then, then there's maybe two, three other cars. People have like 10, 20 cars. Those excesses portions would naturally who, go to. Who determines what the excesses are? Because um, if because I work together means, with my husband yes. and we've acquired all these properties, why should... It takes, it takes a different dimension. The moment it becomes um, a matrimonial property, if the two of us acquired it jointly, yeah. Yeah. then it's our joint property. Yeah. Then at that point, maximum say half, 50%, then becomes a husband's sole property. So you mm. own the half. And the other half becomes the husband's private property. Mm -hmm. It is that one that will, you now have to determine how the percentage that goes to the family. The rest comes to you and your ch your children. So the, children. Lo the the law decides that. Indeed, there are percentages that are. Okay, um, let's say they are in both our names and you've passed. Exactly. Then that one is mine. Then no, no, that's exactly what I'm saying. If yeah. they are in your joint names, uh, remember, they so long as they are more than if it's limited to uh, the household, as I said, yeah, that one almost that one, everything okay, comes okay, to okay, you. Okay. Almost everything comes to you. But as I said, let's say we have 20 cars. And both and all cars, all are, in cars our are in names. our names. Clearly, half of that car is your husband's property. Yeah. Of course. So that half is what you have, You and your kids would have to take your portion. And then a portion goes to the family. Because huh? the other half is yours. Let's, let's even assume <laughs> there are 10 cars. Okay. So And they are all in your joint name. Automatically, five cars belong to you. Yeah. Assuming we're dividing mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. 10 cars belong. I mean, the five of it is yeah. you. Okay. The other five. You remember, you are not alone. The kids, the kids are available. The kids are not you. But it should come to us. Yes, it, it's coming to you. Yeah, but you're saying that a percentage of it a percentage will still go to the family. family. Exactly. Okay. A percentage, a percentage will still go to the extended family, and the extended family here, are the mother and father, if they are alive. So who decides? I make the decision as to what car I'll give or what. They will house. naturally come hunting you. Yeah, but then the law no, no, should no, protect me. You, yeah, the law protects you, but so, that, that is why you have your fifty percent, and that is why the other fifty percent you also have the majority share. That's what I'm saying. That the fifty percent who determines. Let's say I have maybe five Range Rovers, five Kias. I mean, and am I the one to decide so that I can say that then I'm keeping the Range Rovers and the Kia oh, can go to? You, you, usually, there would always be an, um, a way of dividing that. Okay. So, so for instance, naturally they'll bring a lawyer. You would have your lawyer. Yeah. So it may take about three of them. They take about three of that. Two of these goes here, two of that goes here. Or otherwise, we will liquidate those that we cannot agree on. And then we distribute it in accordance. But remember, remember, this is how it goes. It's not as if you're sharing everything with the family mm -hmm. 100%. Okay. It's just a percentage. It's just about 8%, maximum 10% that goes there. Oh. So it's not as if 
you are literally sharing, um, giving the family about 10 or 5 of the cars. I mean, okay. maximum one, two may go there. Yeah. But, but the rest is actually your farm, mm. I mean, your kid's property, not your property. I see. It's I not see. even your property. Okay. It belongs to the kids. But at least if it's just a house and a car, then everything comes then to Then everything comes to you and your kid. All right. Now, with, relating to this woman, the man built on the family land. In that, that is case. where That is where there is a challenge. Okay. The moment you build on the family land, uh -huh. you only have a life interest. In other words, you can only live in us so long as you are alive and subject to good behavior, amongst other things. Okay. So, if your mom is gifting you a land, as you sit here with you, you and I, if your mom or dad is gifting you a land, uh -huh. I would suggest you have the documentation properly done okay. so that it's completely divested of them. So then it should be in the name then of Then it should be you, your name, in your name. As in it the man. It becomes your property, yes. Okay. Private okay. property. I see. No longer a family property. The moment you allow it to remain a family, family property, property, anything you do on that land is not yours. You only have a life interest. And so the moment you die, your family can only live in so long as they behave um, in accordance with the dictates of the extended family. So because it becomes okay. a family property. So the extended family has the right to kick you out? Absolutely. And the so law backs only, that? Unfortunately, it's not, it's, not, it's not your husband's property. But he built it. He only built the superstructure. He didn't, he didn't wow. buy the land. The land is not his. So are you saying in this case, this woman cannot get the house back? He cannot get the house back in this particular case. And that is why you, you are better off buying your own land. But assuming, like we're saying, if this land was gifted to him completely, and then I would assume that he took the necessary steps to perfect the gift. Wait. In which case, then he can have the property back, the okay. land back. Hold on. So she says that when he was sick, she went to the family. They asked her to take care of him herself. When he died, they wanted her to be the one to still bury him because they believe she killed him. Absolutely. Can she not present receipts to say that I also spent this amount of money. You're kicking me out of the house. Pay me back that money then. Unfortunately, um, marriage is a two-way affair. We take, you take care of me, I take care of you. In good and in bad times. And in bad and times, so, his family is kicking me out. Well, it, that is not in bad. The marriage is no longer subsisting after that time. There's no longer marriage. Hmm. Is there a marriage after death? Marriage is a contract between two parties. You become a widow. Unfortunately. Yes, yeah, so that means that everybody knows you as the woman whose husband has Ex -husband. died. Ex-husband. Well, the moment your husband dies or, but you are no or longer, wife dies... You are no longer married. But the marriage is not annulled, is it? Adam? The person married to you is no longer alive. So you are single from the moment your partner dies? Well, I don't know what else you are because it's a contract. And the contract that one party is gone. Yeah, but they make you wear, you know, the black outfits for a whole well, year for, that is and all part of that. So that means that... It's part of the customary. But legally, you're not married anymore. You're, ma you're not married to the man. You were married to him. Oh. You were married to him. I see. Well, why aren't you married to him? Can you marry a dead body? I'm, I'm heartbroken because there are kids involved. Okay, oh, hold on. I agree with you. Hold on. But what else can, can be done? Can the law not fight for the house just because of the kids? Because school fees has to be paid. No. The kids have to be taken care of. Sadly... All these should have been taken care of at the time that the man was alive. Hmm. We should have known all these. Which is why my advice is that take care of your back whilst you are alive. Mm. You don't wait. You don't wait. And you see, the, 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 and, and the thing about gifting, and in fact, in this case, I mean, I, I can understand that she didn't describe totally to all of us as to the nature of this land and how it was given. Yeah. Um, and so there might be a challenge. I mean, mm -hmm. it could be debatable. But we are only taking loosely that indeed it still belongs to the family. Yeah. But if it turns out that indeed the land was properly given to the man mm. and, and all the necessary uh, requirements were followed yeah. in gifting it to him and it is in the man's name, then it's no longer a family property, despite the fact that okay. it was given to him by a family. So if she has documents to prove that it's the land It's not necessarily the document. The document can only give you evidence of one thing but if there are if there are enough evidence to confirm that indeed it then became the private property of the, of the man. man then she that has the right that is so in this time. case what can she do in case so in this case yeah well like, like i said she would have to dig further to find out the circumstances of the of, of giving mm. um, because i'm only using the gift because i assume it was a gift okay yeah because giving you a land necessarily does not mean a gift okay. it may be what happens in most instances Oh, now you are a young lady, you are making some decent income. Why don't you come and build home? We have a lot of land in mm -hmm, the house. I mean, mm -hmm. come and just build. Yeah. Now, that is the circumstance that I'm referring to. In that circumstance, if you mistakenly go and build because mom says come and build, yeah. you are actually building for the family. Oh, my God. You are building for the family. You're not building for you. 
the way you're heartbroken, I hope you don't have a similar situation. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no, it's not but I just feel very sorry for the woman. Well, I, I mean, but these things happen. That's what if her money was, I mean, she, she might have contributed. spent a lot of yeah. money. Yeah, that is why she can only live in, in that property, subject to good behavior. Subject Who determines the good behavior? Unfortunately, the family determines Oh, that. my God. They determine that. Yeah, then yeah. that means I... And so, and, <laughs> and if you do not behave according to their dictates, they will kick you out. Because it's not your property. It's now your property. Who has the right to the kids in this case? No, no. Especially the, if the I'll woman cannot take care of them. She's not financially stable. Unfortunately, they are your kids. They so are, the family cannot take you to court and No, no, no. Nobody take can take your family from, you. from me. Nobody okay. can take your family from you. Um, they can only help you take care of it because it is their blood as well. Mm -hmm. And so they may decide to, out of magnanimity, come in and support okay. one way or the other. Right. But it's not a responsibility uh, simply because my, brother's, my brother is gone. And so it becomes my responsibility. Yeah. Um, usually, customarily, somebody may succeed their, fa their husband, and that person is usually expected to help support the upkeep okay. of the family. Right. So, I mean, the, uh, but, but otherwise, remember, even going to court for the estate, I mean, for the estate to be vested, it is the woman that has the first option. I see. Okay, good. See, she would be the first person to go to, to court for, for, for a grant of an LA, in, mm. in this case, when she died, I mean, because the man died in, in interstate. Okay. And so she would have the um, LA granted to herself and maybe if the kids are old enough and the kids, maybe about 18. And so, um, and you do know, she doesn't even need the family to do this. Okay. Now, this confirms their ownership of any property that the man might have left behind. Okay. But a family property is not part of the property. Let me, let me divert a bit. Uh, we're talking about being a married couple. Absolutely. Engagement. Absolutely. Is that also a legal? Is that legally recognized? I, I would not call it the way you want to. Um, it's legally recognized as part of the processes of marriage, but not legally recognized as being a finality to marriage. So. So if you do an engagement, it's usually <laughs> what we, we have come to conclude that that becomes a promise to marry. But does, is it not recognized by law as customary marriage? No, it's not. They are different things. Is you're just confused. The about traditional it. marriage? Yeah, traditional marriage is different from engagement. Usually okay. people combine the two, but it doesn't mean they are the same. Okay, wait. I'm talking about traditional marriage. Yes, traditional so marriage what, is a marriage properly so where we go to the home of the woman. Absolutely. But they don't sign anything at that point. Well are you you are required to sign, except that most people do not sign because it's they a marriage. They wait and on, sign at the white wedding, right? That's what people do. That's yeah. why I'm saying that they are Three different stages that you are discussing at this moment. You are well, only confusing asking, the three. No, no, no. What I'm asking is, right. so we haven't signed on paper that we're legally you married. You do not but need then, to sign. So if there's a traditional marriage, we are legally it's married. So in case I, mean, I lose my my partner, then I legally still have access. Hundred percent. Okay. Okay. What if we've been cohabitating for a while? It's still a marriage. We, sometimes we normally would. There's no it. ring. There's no engagement. There's, there's nothing, no traditional there's marriage. But I might not even have seen your family members. Yeah. Or or, or the other way around. But once we hold each other out as husband and wife, we are automatically married. What if we don't call ourselves husband and wife? You do not need to call yourself we're, husband and we're wife. We're dating, but we have children, and we live together. We've lived together for maybe 10 years. Everybody knows you as husband yeah. and wife. People assume you're husband and wife. You, uh, yeah. People ask you, is, is he your husband? You say yes. Yeah. If people ask him, his friends ask him, is that your That's wife? That's his woman. Oh, oh, yes, it's my wife. And you go to each other's family, funerals, so, attend in, um, occasions yeah. on both sides. You so are if you're married. Fiance and you are married. You are married. You are married. So legally, I have you. rights to your property. You actually got married day one from day one, except I didn't know you got married. How? How? I mean, we just agreed to date. And yeah, then... it's an inform. We call it informal customary marriage. I see. Informal customary okay. marriage. Um, you know, it is not every time that you have to formally get married to a person. In fact, that is why, in I think sometime in 2012, 13, mm -hmm. the government was trying to do a statue, like yeah. codify this, to yeah. make it a statue, so that we put in time limit, that after four years of cohabiting with a person, yeah. he becomes your lovely worded, I mean, spouse. But it already exists in our law, mm. except that there are no timelines. I so see. you do not need to leave for a day or two. So long as you hold each other out as husband and wife, you are married. It's as simple as that. Okay. So if being single, if mm -hmm. both of us go out every day, oh, Charlie, my wife, that too. Mm -hmm. And then, go there. oh, okay, Charlie, wifey, how be you? Mm -hmm. and then, oh, people see us in occasions. I mean, we probably, you even in signing documents, you put in, oh, married. Or when they ask you, you say, oh, yes, uh, husband. Yeah. Uh, you put a man's name. Yeah. He does the same thing in his office or other places. My dear, you got married okay. from that very moment. Let's say we started a business. And this business has my name, my husband's name, and let's say his sister or brother's name. But we are the majority shareholders in Who the business. We, as in you and your husband. Me and my husband. Very well. And God forbid my husband dies. 
what happens to the business? Well, business, who, the business runs. Yeah, but then who gains ownership of it? You see, um, the, okay, let let's me. say between me and my husband, we own 60%. So maybe I own 30, he owns yes. 30, and then the other husband's owns 40. sisters and brothers, they are nowhere close to his family. She, the husband is only important to the family so long as he's alive. To, I mean, to his brothers and sisters, so long as he's alive. The moment he passes on, those people, they do not even feature at all no, by way of his if property. they start fighting me for... They will start fighting you, naturally, that would happen. Because, because they would want to take over the other 30 they and cannot, say they are the majority well, they cannot, That one cannot be legally done. Because okay. you, you, you are the only person who is entitled to go to court for the grant of earlier, assuming he died without any yeah. will. Yeah. And so, naturally, once you do that, you can then use that to go through the processes of also acquiring his other interests. Okay, in and it's and very so, likely to come to and you. And almost automatic. I see. Almost automatic. You and, and your children, assuming they are children. Would you advise, though, that as if you marry into a family, you start a business with everybody's name involved, your husband and everybody else? You see, the problem is that when you say everybody else's name involved, I'm only assuming that you mean they are shareholders. But, yeah. but that may not necessarily be the case. Mm. You may be involved, but you can only be, you may probably be a director or a secretary or any other officer, but it does not necessarily entitle mm. you to owning shares in the company. Okay. And so, but I'm, just to clarify that, but okay. let's assume that what you're saying, you mean the people are also shareholders. Um, usually, because of our capital requirements um, and, 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 and the difficulties in raising funds, mm -hmm. it's easier for people to um, combine resources, particularly with their immediate family members, to start a business. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. But you have to make sure that while doing that, you are putting in place the necessary mechanisms to take care of your back in case you pass on. That's all I would advise to be done. And that's the most appropriate way of ensuring that the conflict that you leave your wife and your family with is reduced to the barest minimum. I see. Usually once you take care of your back, the conflict is resolved even before you die. Mm -hmm. So the moment the conflict comes up, you have evidence to establish that indeed this conflict shouldn't even continue. Okay. You nip it in the butt right at that moment. But if you want your wife to constantly engage your family in a fight, mm -hmm. in open both, both in open and in court, then you die without a will. So this woman should forget fighting for any property. I would never focus. say so because, as I said, because she has not been able to describe to us in, in real terms how, how this okay. land was given okay. to the husband. Yeah. We cannot write it off. But just in case, you know, the land still belongs to the family. If the she land still no belongs to the then it's very difficult for her to, to, to gain the property back. It's very difficult. But there will be this other interests. Like she said, there is a snit that she probably would have to herself. But she says that she, she had to share. She shared that money with and the I family. And I don't understand how that was shared. Because for, the, uh, for the funeral? Yeah, but, but I don't understand how that would be done. Because really, Snit, the man, Snit is virtually like a whale. It's mm -hmm. a whale in there. It's more like a statue-created mm -hmm. whale. Because the man would have determined who gains what. And so you cannot share, really, with anybody else. Because the man would have determined that the wife gets A, mm -hmm. the kids get B, and maybe a mother, usually it's either a mother or, yeah. or a father, yeah. gets C. That would have oh. been determined already, okay. even before the man dies. Okay. You see, so that is why most people do not fight over whales. I'm sorry, over snakes. Over snakes. Because yeah, the man because would have taken care of that. Okay. He has already taken care of that, and it's the same thing that you should do in your other life. Hmm. That's just one phase of your life. The way that one was easily done without any dispute. How can? You, why can't you do the same here? Yeah. See, the difficulty is that we always feel we are not going to die anytime soon. Unfortunately, death has no timetable for anyone. Hmm. You just go. I mean. Looking at the way 2020 is already going, I would advise, um, you know, yes, pray for long life. It's important. Absolutely. But also go ahead and get a will done. Uh, you can always amend it as and when. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. So Even the day you want to die. The day you wish the to die. The day you want to die. Yeah, the day you wish we to die. We don't want to die. <laughs> Actually, it gets to a point people it. wish to die. Yeah, it gets to that's a point. True. Not because of the stresses of life, but because of yeah. age and other things. Anyway. I mean, other stresses. Thank you so much. I've been speaking to lawyer Justice Abdullah, and we've been talking about the PNDC law 111, which was passed in 1985, amended in 1991, and it's about the right to property. And so I hope that you've learned a thing or two from it. Thank you so much.